Speak of the devil. Were you? We were just talking about you. You couldn't have chosen a more fascinating subject. Right. We can expect action soon. Well, hello. Come in, come in. To what do I owe the honor? I'm not sure you'll think it is such an honor. Try me. All right. Mother said you accused Uncle Roger of knowing something about Bill Malloy's death. I don't think I put it just like that. I don't care how you put it. Is that what you meant? Well, I've had... I've had many conversations uh, at a lot of different times. I've said a lot of different things. It was things. at Maggie Evans' house when Vicky was there for dinner. Oh, yes. I suppose Miss Winters ran right up to Collinwood to repeat everything verbatim. No, she didn't. She didn't say anything about it. Maybe I've misjudged her. It was Maggie. She came up to Collinwood looking for Uncle Roger. He wasn't at home, so she spoke to Mother. Yes, that's something Maggie would do. Did you really say that Uncle Roger was involved in Mr. Malloy's death? I may have. But how could he have been? And why? I just don't believe it. I wish somebody would have felt this strongly about me ten years ago. Does it all go back to that accident? Yes, it does. But that was settled when the jury convicted you. I thought the jury was wrong. So did Bill Malloy. That's why he was killed. He was not murdered. He slipped and fell. There was no reason for him to slip and fall. There was a good reason for him to be killed. And there you have my version of what happened ten years ago. Something I didn't do. Something your uncle was responsible for, but for which I went to prison. I just can't believe it. No one else did, obviously. I mean, I don't believe Uncle Roger would do something. You don't believe your dear uncle would allow an innocent man to go to prison for something your dear uncle was guilty of? I Is know that... he wouldn't. Burke, you yourself said you don't remember. You said you were drunk at the time. My sweet Carolyn, have you ever been drunk enough to... No. No, of course you haven't. Well, I was drunk enough to know very little of what was going on that night. But I do remember that I was not driving the car at the time. And you think Uncle Roger... Yes, I think he was driving. What would that have to do with Mr. Malloy? Somehow he found out. He was going to expose the whole thing. That's why he was killed. No. No, I know you're wrong, Burke. Can't you just forget all about it? Uncle Roger couldn't... He wouldn't have done anything like that. Well, I don't say that he did it out of malice of forethought. Maybe he went to see Mr. Malloy. Maybe they argued. Maybe there was a struggle and Malloy fell in the water and drowned. I don't know. But I think your Uncle Roger knows. All right. I'll ask him. You do that, Carolyn. Ask him. I wish it didn't have to be this way. This is the way it has to be. May he find whatever he's after. To Bill Malloy. To Bill Malloy. What do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor? Lie in the morning. <laughs> that was Bill's favorite song, you know that? The, oh boy, do I know it. I used to work on the boats with him. That's all you heard all day long. Uh, Put him in a long boat till he's sober. Put him in a long boat till he's sober. Put him in a long boat till he's sober. Or lie in the morning. What do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor? Or lie in the morning. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. You would. <laughs> hey, you have a good strong voice there. Well, if you ain't loud, that it is. If, if we had a third, you know, we could harmonize. Hey, wait a minute. I think your prayers are answered. Don't go away. Welcome to the Metropolitan Opera House. Hey. Hey. You're fine. Oh, no, no. There's no time for judgments tonight. Where's your boyfriend? I haven't got a boyfriend. Well, then you won't mind joining us. You know my old friend Sam Evans, I'm sure. Good evening. Hello. Please, sit down. Thank you. <laughs> that was quite a serenade. Oh, yes, we're singing to an old and deserving friend who's out <laughs> looking for his just desserts. Hey, you're all wet. Uh, is it raining? It's pouring. How long have you been in here? Oh, years and years. What day is today, Sam? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what day is it, Miss Stoddard? <laughs> I think you're both crazy. <laughs> wise. Only wise. Mm. Where's Vicky? Yeah, you should have brought Vicky along. I'm sorry if you're disappointed. Well, Carolyn, she's a nice girl. Her bright smile would brighten up this table. Well, then I guess you don't need me. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry, Carolyn. Sit down. I didn't mean anything. Come you um, must forgive my boorish friend, Miss Stoddard. Please. Why don't you join us in song, will you please? Okay. What would you like to drink? Or maybe you want something to eat. What does it matter if eat. I didn't have any? Oh, my gosh. I'm supposed to be home for dinner. I'll get murdered. Oh, now, do you tell Maggie not to touch a hair of your head? No, no, no. This is a very special occasion. She's got a young man over at the house, and I... Uh, well, um, I guess I'd better get going. I, 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 I'll see you around, Bert. Hey, round and round. Joe Haskell, right? I beg your pardon? Maggie's guest. It's Joe, isn't it? Well, did I, did I say that? Loud and clear. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll see you around. Oh, the green eye of jealousy, huh? Why should I be jealous of anything Joe does? That's a good question. Another good question is, what are we going to do? That is entirely up to you. What do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor? To Bill Malloy, who died so cruelly in the sea. Put him in a long boat till he's sober. Put him in a long boat till he's sober. Put him in a long boat till he's sober. Early in the morning. Well, here we are. I don't know when I've had such a wonderful evening. Well, let's just continue uh, where we left off. And where was that? Well, I was having a drink. Oh. Well, maybe this time I'll join you. May I see your identification card? There are other ways to prove I'm old enough. Well, in that case, we'll uh, we'll start with a drink. And don't make mine too strong. That I won't. But make it strong enough. Okay, I will. I'm so glad I ran into you at the Blue Whale. Well, that's another thing. What's the town's most attractive girl doing in a place like the Blue Whale alone? I was in a mood. Have a fight with your young man? I don't even want to talk about it. Yes, we had a fight. But he is not, as you so elegantly put it, my young man. Well, in that case, let's talk about a much more fascinating subject. What subject is that? Your old man, me. Why do you always have to pretend you're so old? Oh, I always feel that way when I'm around somebody who is so young. I thought we just agreed that you don't have to see my identification card to know my age. Yeah, <laughs> you're absolutely right. <laughs> Besides, a man shouldn't talk about a woman's age unless she's under seven or over seven. Correct. Skull. What shall we drink to? Well, I don't see anyone else around here, do you? No. Well, then let's drink to us. To us. What we need is some uh, music. <coughs> A 
and motorists are urged to drive with extreme caution, avoiding Highway 202 if possible. 1A is open to traffic and so is 9. Flash floods due to the storm have inundated routes 208 and the coast highway. There, that's better. Much better. Besides, with such a storm raging outside, I can very well go home right away, can I? Yeah, I wish old Sam was here. He had some kind of Shakespearean quotation for that. Do you really wish Sam was still with us? Well, now that you mention it, I think he positively would be a third wheel. <laughs> Isn't that supposed to read fifth wheel? <laughs> and not if you're riding a two-wheel carriage. And speaking of carriages, yours is very good. Thank you, sir. Well, then, why don't you park it right over here? lucky to find a parking place when it's so congested. Well, you're a preferred customer. Am I, Bert? How else could you find a parking place so easily? Well, aren't I just a member of the Collins family you've declared war against? Carolyn, I think the time has come to tell you that we've got to forget about this so-called war between me and the Collins family. Agreed? Agreed. <laughs> so what do we talk about? Well... We can always talk about uh, me and my past. I suppose there have been lots of girls in it. There were a few. Well, in that case, I think I prefer talking about your future. I tell you, I haven't lived until you've seen Rio at carnival time. Rio for those few days is like like a man didn't have an enemy in the world. And there's nothing to do but enjoy yourself. Oh, it sounds heavenly. Well, it wasn't as uh, heavenly as all that. Oh, you mean there was a bit of hell raising, Well, there's too. a thin line between the two. I bet I know which side of the line you're on. My dear Miss Stoddard. Carol. My dear Carol. Why didn't you try that without the mind? Dear Carol. I forgot what I was going to say. Do you mind if I put my feet up on the table? <laughs> Your feet? <laughs> First time I did this, in front of a girl, I was the most embarrassed guy you ever saw. Holding the socks. Holding both socks. <laughs> and, and to complicate matters, she couldn't speak English and I couldn't speak Portuguese. What did she do? Yeah, she taught me a great deal about coffee. There are many theories about the best coffee bean. Were you in love with her? <laughs> oh, no. We were very good friends. Bert, have you ever been in love? Yes. Once. Is it always such a painful experience? Not really. <laughs> it's been a charming evening. I didn't mean that the way it sounded. This has been the most wonderful evening I've ever had in my whole life. Do you think we could have a few more? Yes. Shall I drive you home? No. The chiefs might not approve. Besides, I'm a very good swimmer. beauty how did you avoid the castle guards to get here naturally I just made myself invisible and walked right through them I wish you'd teach me that trick as a matter of fact I thought it was going to be difficult there for a minute my uncle Roger has radar eyes you know it got you uh, dropping out of the second-story tower did he huh? <laughs> nothing as exciting as that 
He came storming into my room and threatened me with all sorts of things if I kept our date tonight. How did he find out about it? David. My friend, David. Well, David is such a good friend of yours that he was very mad that I was going to see you tonight. Since he's been forbidden to see you, he thinks it's unfair. So he took his case to a higher court. <laughs> his father. I can imagine Roger's reaction. He was furious. But you batted your beautiful eyelashes and he succumbed to your charms. Would you? I surrender. And <laughs> just like that? I thought you'd at least put up a good fight. Why should I put up a fight? When it's so pleasant to surrender. I wish I knew if you were just teasing me or... What? No. For what reason would I be teasing you? Oh, it was just a thought I had. You were surprised about my phone call. I was absolutely bowled over. I told you I would. I know, but... Well, I thought it was something you just say, you know, like, I'll be seeing you. Well, I am seeing you. And I like what I see. I like what I see, too. Good. You know what we're going to do tonight? We're going to make a night of it. We're going to finish our dinner, go to a nice, quiet place, have a few drinks, dance, talk about nothing but ourselves. How does that sound? It sounds marvelous. Finish your dinner. Then we can forget about the family feud tonight. What family feud? We can forget about Uncle Roger. Roger? Roger? Who's that? <laughs> well, how do you feel? How do you feel about going on the town now? Right now, I feel ready for just about anything. Because when I bring you home tonight, your Uncle Roger is not going to take it lightly. Oh, I don't think we have to worry about Uncle Roger. He's much more concerned about other things right now. Oh? Like what? I think he's interested in Vicky. Seriously. What makes you say that? Well, he wanted to know where she'd gone this afternoon, just because she had some errand in town. He couldn't even wait for her to come home. Went driving off right after her. Roger and Vicky, that's an unusual combination. Not so unusual, really. I guess they're both pretty lonely. So Roger went looking for her, did he? Yes, and the funny thing about it was that she was right there in the house. They must have just missed each other. Why was he so anxious to see her? You ought to know better than to ask a question like that. And why was he so upset? Burke, I thought we were going to forget about Uncle Roger and the rest of the family for the night. We are, we are. I just don't want you to get in trouble when I bring you home tonight. Now, you say Roger was... was pursuing little Miss Muffet, Vicky. <laughs> yes. And it all had to do with that pen you gave me. The one Uncle Roger lost. What about it? Well, the minute I mentioned to him that I had told you, Vicky... You mentioned to Roger that Vicky knew he lost the pen? Well, yes. Why not? Oh, yeah. Quite right. Why not? Uh, I forgot. I, I have a phone call to make, a uh, business. I'll be right back. Please don't be too long. I won't be. <laughs> Carolyn, you're gonna have me drawn and quartered and flung to the lions. What's the matter? That was Blair. I have a business meeting in 10 minutes. I knew it was too good to be true. Another time? Promise? I should be furious. Well, you have every right to be. But I'm not. Not really. I enjoyed it. Will I really see you again soon? Unless you deliberately avoid me. I don't think I could do that, Burke. Would you want me to my car? Of course. 